The public sector is focused heavily on digital modernization as agencies rise to meet the needs of today's increasingly digital world. In this interview, we spoke with Siemens Government Technologies President and CEO, John Eustica, to find out more about the technologies shaping this digital modernization and what these efforts mean for the broader GovCon community. John has been with Siemens for over 20 years, and in October 2022, he was officially named President and CEO of SGT. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Also, we would love to hear from you. If you have a question for the leaders of GovCon, please drop a comment below or email studio at executivemosaic.com. Hello, and welcome to Executive Mosaic's video interview series. I'm Summer Myatt, and here to speak with me today is John Eustica, President and CEO of Siemens Government Technologies. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Summer. It's really a pleasure to be here with you. John, first of all, congratulations. I know you're entering your 22nd year at Siemens. I'm curious, what is the most important lesson you've learned about the government contracting world over the last two decades, and how is that lesson informing your strategy as the head of SGT? Yeah, that's a great question, Summer. And, and yeah, I've been with Siemens a long time, uh, started in the power industry, and then I spent a few years here in the government. And I would say what a, the biggest thing that I've learned in, in my time at Siemens is just the, you know, the incredible magnitude of the government customer uh, and their mission. And, and also the consequences of what we're doing and all the positive things it can have. Uh, we look at our government customer and say, you know, just this extreme dedication to the mission and to the betterment, you know, of everybody in our country and, and to really improving things. It's, uh, it's just been a privilege to serve the customers and, uh, and also the employees of Siemens and, and of SGT. And, and it's just been a tremendous responsibility that we have in that and that I have in that and that we continue to you know, earn and keep that trust with our customer, with our employees, with all of our stakeholders. And John, when we last spoke to you, I know SGT had just gone through the FedRAMP process and the Siemens Defense Cloud had just gone live. Building on those accomplishments, what can we expect to see from SGT in 2023? Well, a lot of good things are happening. Now, we really believe that using the Siemens Accelerator technology, we are just perfectly positioned and, and no other company can really connect the real and the digital world like we can. And what that does for our customers is allows, you know, much faster cycle times in making improvements. It allows them to see uh, the improvements that they're making and to have them shown on the screen in the virtual world before they actually need to make physical investments. You know, we're the integrator for Siemens Technologies to the federal government. Uh, we help customers do these things every day. And then Siemens Defense Cloud just being one great example of that. And, and I think what's coming for Siemens Defense Cloud is Siemens has a, a broad portfolio of tools. And you'll see more of those tools into the FedRAMP process. So we'll be able to offer the customer more tools in the secure space with the cloud technologies and, and in a way that makes it really easy for the customer to solve their mission. Uh, I expect that, you know, as Siemens brings all of our softwares into the Accelerator portfolio. Also, will SGT bring all those softwares into one offering towards the federal government? And then, and what that does is it's really allowing the customer to transact and to use the software much easier. So what we're really trying to do is to package all of these things for the federal customer and make it as easy as possible for them to get to the technology, to get to serve the mission. So I think if you look at uh, you know, what's happening post pandemic, uh, companies really now are, are, are thinking about we've got to sharpen the pencils in terms of how we, we get the most for our dollar. And that's where our software tools really help. And these digital twin tools, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, really help to rethink the way you're looking at buildings, the way that we're supporting the mission, the way we're keeping our, our teams safe, and the way we're automating and we're moving forward in technology. So we're not wasting a lot of energy and time thinking about what we're doing. We're doing that in the virtual world, we're testing it in the virtual world, we're failing in the virtual world, so that when we do it in the real world, it's right the first time. And, and using our technologies, we're able to see how these new automation and all these new things that the government wants to do are working without ever having to spend you know, money on actually buying the assets. When we buy something and we help the customer do that, we know it's right and it'll be right the first time. So I do want to talk to you about digital twins, uh, modeling, and the virtual world. 
I'm curious, what is your vision for the future of digital twin technology in the federal government, and where do you think it can be most effective and impactful? Yeah, I think digital twin, you're, we're starting to see it everywhere. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing question in that we're, in fact, today we were just talking about examples of, of, of using digital twins in new places uh, with the Navy customer. And it's just really important that we continue to use this as, as we are modernizing you know, infrastructure and, and doing all these changes that the customer is asking us to do and helping with that. We look at the, uh, you know, across all of the military services and all the DOD, it's really becoming super important to have the right software. And that's where Digital Twin comes in. And it also is about speed. If you see everything is now about putting things forward and, the sp and moving much faster than the enemy and, and moving much faster than, uh, you know, other adversaries to, to serve the mission. And I think that's where Digital Twin really helps. It's really an acceleration tool. And, and what I was saying earlier is you can do something much faster in the digital world. You can do it much safer in the digital world, and you can make sure when you deploy it, it works because you can have the inputs. You can collect the data up front. You can try it, and you can fail in the digital world so that when you're using it in real time, it's working. And I think Siemens software is playing really a direct role in making sure this thing is happening and making sure this digital transformation at the DOD and in other places in the government is taking place. Thank you. John, I know SGT is doing a lot of work around energy resilience. Can you explain the importance and the urgency behind that work? And is that an area in which you're seeing a lot of growth? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, an, it's a, along with the digitalization efforts, I would say energy resiliency is right behind them. I think what our, what our customer is realizing is that we are 100% reliant on energy. And so not having that resiliency can mean uh, a risk for them. And we're really working hard on helping you know, plug all the holes in the resiliency chain. The other thing is, as we move towards EVs and we move towards having more things being electrified, we also have to then update and improve our uh, energy infrastructure. And so uh, it's not as simple in, in a lot of cases as just, you know, bringing an EV there and plugging it into the wall. We've actually got to upgrade everything behind that to make sure that the energy infrastructure can, can tolerate the strain. And I think the strategies that we have are, you know, not only generating the power, but we're also helping them move the power better. We're also showing how we can create resiliency that's using backup systems, uh, using uh, renewable generation, using other forms of alternative energy to, to be able to use it as part of the resiliency backbone. Really up until the last few years, energy resiliency kind of meant having a backup generator, probably like some of us do at our house. You know, in the event the power goes out, we turn the generator on. That's not a great long-term solution. And it's also, of course, very you know, poor for the environment, not very efficient. So we're really helping the customer think about how can we put in long-term resiliency into their energy strategy? And then how do we implement it? And we use, uh, one of the ways we do that is by helping them with microgrids. And that allows them to actually run in a controlled environment, meaning we can be completely independent. We can generate our own energy. We can pass that energy around with our microgrid technology. And we can really make sure that the customer has that you know, energy resiliency and also that protection uh, in the form of that it can't be cyber attacked and it can't be harmed because it's really self-contained. I'd like to ask, which emerging technologies do you think will be most impactful in the federal landscape in the next few years as the public sector moves forward with digital modernization? I think the emerging side is really this microelectronics. We have seen during COVID and, and during these supply chain shortages, how big of an impact uh, microelectronics can have on the entire um, infrastructure and the entire manufacturing ecosystem. So I think that's a really a place where things are rapidly transforming. And it's a place where we think we can really help our customers, not only with our digital twin technology, but also with our, our EDA technology and the way that uh, manufacturing of those is done. But I think microelectronics is going to be some place that we continue to to grow as Siemens. Uh, we want to leverage, you know, everything we have. We can, we also have technology in the Siemens portfolio to help manufacture those things and automate those processes. And what we're doing is we're helping the semiconductor uh, industry on the commercial side of the house to to work through these things. And we really look forward to helping more as we go to this domestic production and development of microelectronics and semiconductors within 
the U.S., really helping the government customer to achieve their goals. So, John, I want to ask you about the CHIPS Act and how that's impacting your work. When do you think we can start to see the benefits from that increased investment in microelectronics in the U.S.? Yeah, Summer, I think we'll start to see the benefits from the CHIPS Act very soon. We, there's a lot of discussions ongoing right now with the customers about how to deploy the funds. Uh, Siemens has technology to uh, not only help design the, the factories with our digital twin technology, we can use our automation technology to help construct those factories and, and, and automate them for the manufacturing of the semiconductors, as well as you know process automate and continue to help those manufacturers get more throughput. I think finally, we can use our EDA technology to help design the circuits for manufacturers. So we can really, as you're building these greenfield facilities or even brownfield facilities here in uh, stateside, you know, Siemens is really well positioned to help deploy that money and be able to make sure we invest it wisely. So I, I think we're going to see it really start flowing. And, and anybody who's tried to buy anything electronic recently still knows that there's a shortage out there. So the need is very strong to, to get this domestic sourcing of semiconductors stood up. John, lastly, what is the most significant trend you're seeing in GovCon today, and how do you think that will shape the industry in the next three to five years? I think we talked about it, you know, and, and, and today around resiliency and, and really the carbon reduction goals, you know, meeting the lofty goals that the uh, customer and, and that the executive branch has set out is going to be hard. And the only way to do that is really going to be by thinking differently. So I think, you know, making things sustainable it's going to, you know, it's starting already to change the behavior and change the way companies in the commercial sector are acting. And I think it's just a matter of time before that bleeds into the government and we'll start to see that accelerate. So I think really from the next three to five years is going to be all about sustainability, carbon reduction and, and energy resiliency. Well, John, thank you so much for your time today and for all the work you do at SGT. No, thank you so much, Summer. It was a pleasure. 